Let's talk about rotation. So if I have a little cube, x1, x2. So if I have a little cube and I rotate it through some angle, So this is, there's no deformation there. I didn't draw that very well, but we don't actually strain the cube. We don't change the shape of the cube. We just rotate it, okay? Just rotate the cube. Then we can write down, you know, what is the transformation between these two coordinate axes? We have x1, x2, x3 is equal to cosine theta minus sine minus sine theta zero, sine theta, cosine theta zero, 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 one. X one, X two, X three. Right, so I just wrote down a system of equations that transform The, 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 small, the coordinates big X to little x, right? Well then, if we take, you know, so what, basically what we've written here is X times something, a rotation matrix, R, big X, right? Well, if we look at a differential, you, you know, length DX, DX, right, what does this look like? What does this equation look like? I think if you go back in your notes, you'll see that when we de derived the deformation gradient, we had something that looked like this. Right? So for a pure rotation, without deforming that little volume, a pure rotation, the deformation gradient is that rotation matrix. Okay? So this is sort of key in that you know, I said we didn't actually deform it, but we called F a deformation gradient, right? So it's a little bit, the, the terminology could be a little bit confusing, but understand deformation means strains plus rotations, okay? So we don't, we can have zero strain and rotate it, and the deformation gradient will be non-zero, okay? So using that deform deformation gradient, you know, F is equal to R, let's evaluate the green strain. Right? So we had, if you remember, another way to write the green strain is F transpose F minus I, right? We can write it in terms of the, displ the displacement gradients or in terms of the deformation gradient, right? So if we, if we write it like this and we just plug in R, right, so R transpose R minus I, okay, now this R is, some, is, is a special matrix, it's, it's unitary, right? So that means that its transpose is its inverse, right? You can just show that, you can, you can compute the inverse of that matrix I wrote down and you'll see that it's transposes its inverse, okay? So since it's transposes is, is its inverse, another way then I could write this equation is one half R inverse R minus I. What's R inverse R? I, right? A matrix times its inverse is the identity matrix. Okay, okay so we have I minus I, which is what? Zero, okay? So that's right. That's, I mean, that's what we want in the green strain, right? We, we want, we, I said we didn't strain it, we just rotated. it. And by our definition of strain, it's like this change in length divided by original length, right? 
So all we did was rotate this guy. We want our strain measure to evaluate to zero, and it did. We're happy, okay? Now, let's go back to the small strain, right? So the smaller linear strain, which pretty soon we'll just call the strain, right, is grad u plus grad u transpose, all right? Now, if you remember from our equation, really, in this, in this class, as far as kinematics is concerned, you only need to sort of know vectors, right? We, we had this reference, you know, the two configurations and vectors. So we have the reference configuration and the deformed configuration. Little x is the position in, in, the, ref, in the deformed configuration. Big x is the position in the reference configuration. And the distance between them is a vector u, right? And then I said if you, if you partial differentiate this guy with respect to x, right? Partial x, partial x, right? Then this is our definition of the deformation gradient. This is i. This is grad u, right? OK? So from that, we can say grad u is equal to f minus i. Right? So let's plug in this into our equation for small strain. So you have F minus I plus F minus I transpose, which is equal to F minus I plus F transpose minus I, right, which is equal to 1 half F plus F transpose minus I, OK? Now let's plug in our, de our you know, rotation. So R equals F, OK? Plug that guy in, and we have one half r plus r transpose minus i. All right. Now we want that to be zero for rotation, right? When is that zero? The only time it's zero is if r equals i, right? And if r equals i, that means there was no rotation. If you, if you mul multiply a vector times identity matrix, you get back a vector. You didn't transform it at all. You didn't do anything. Right? So you, under, under a pure rotation, this is not equal to 0. The small strain is not equal to 0 under a pure rotation. Okay. I have a little demo to show you what we mean here. Anybody see that? Maybe I'll uh, make it a little bigger. Hang on. Okay, so we have our, can you see that? No? I can make it bigger. Uh, it, it's not just the size, it's sort of the, it doesn't show up well on the screen. Huh? Well, keep in mind that this is recorded, so you will be able to see this in high def in the video. I, I think you'll be able to see what's important, right? So we have a little, we have a little cube, and we're going to deform it, okay? And here, I know you can't read this, but the one on the top is the linear strain, the small strain, and this is the green strain. And I'm going to compute it 
I'm going to compute each of these while I'm deforming this guy. Okay? And again, I know you can't see it well. But you, you, if you want to watch the video, you can see it in, in high definition, right? And so I'm going to just go ahead and jump right to the point. If I make a pure rotation, right, I'm not deforming this cube at all, right? I'm just rotating it. And even though you may not be able to read the numbers, this was all zeros to begin with. You see it hasn't changed. The green strand is all zeros. This is changing. So the definition of strain in any mechanics, you know, undergraduate mechanics textbook, likely any geomechanics definition that, you know, textbook that you open, the definition of strain in there changes, because it's, it's usually the small strain, it changes when you rotate the body. Now this is okay in most geomechanics applications because you're not, you're not rotating significantly the earth, right? right? You know, 10,000 feet in the ground. You're not rotating the earth significantly. Right? Rotations are small, okay? But the funny thing about rotations are is, is, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a strain and a rotation, right? So if I go back and I start here, and let's say I apply some shear strain. Now, now you see they're both changing, but I'm actually deforming it, so they should. And you, if you could actually see the numbers, you'll see that when the deformations are small, the numbers are very close to one another, right? But as I deform it more, right? So the funny things about rotation is, you know, if, so I, here I clearly, I've applied a uniform shear strain. So you can think of like, I held the corners of it and I pulled it like that square into a diamond, right? So let me do that and then follow that with a rotation. Okay? Now if I just showed you that, could you tell me that I strained it in shear and rotated it? Or did I just shear it from here? Did I just push on it here? You can't tell, right? How I got there. Did I strain it and rotate it? Or did I just strain it and not rotate it at all? You can never, no. The, the, the deformation gradient, and we won't really go into this in the class. I mean, from basically from here forward, we're going to just accept that small strain as the strain. But the deformation gradient can always be decomposed into a stretch and a rotation. Okay? But how you define the ro ro rotation is a choice. And there are multiple definitions for how you define it. I mean, they're not just arbitrary, we, you know, but... but there are m multiple definitions for how you define that rotation. Okay, and it's, it's, it's not always clear. So rotation is a sort of a, 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 it's an important concept. That's all I, you know, it's the reason I went through, I mean, the whole lecture today is basically just to show you that this rotation is an important concept. And if you encounter a problem where the deformations are sufficiently large, that you really can't tell the difference between what was a strain and what was a rotation, like an example there, or if they're actual rigid body rotations, then you can't use the small strain. You have to go to the nonlinear strain, and you have to take another class to understand all the kinematics involved with that. Okay.